connection between female beauty and male infatuation is one of the most regular sequences of cause and effect observable in everyday life. E.H. Carr, What is History? Hello and welcome back. I know you missed me. Chapter 19 is a philosophical preamble to the wedding of Camacho, found in chapters 20 and 21. Confusion and contrasts throughout this chapter call us to pay attention to details. Out on the road, Don Quixote encounters four horsemen, caballeros, what seemed like two clerics or students and two peasants riding atop four ass-like beasts. These will be clarified. The clerics are students, and one of the farmers will actually turn out to have moderate legal training. Note the contrast between each of the students. One carries two black fencing swords, and the other carries a series of textiles wrapped in green buckram. This cloth was used to cover books, and its color echoes Miranda. Note also that the farmers have their own merchandise. The peasants carried other things which were a sign and indication that they were returning from some large city where they had bought them and were carrying them back to their village. Cervantes' emphasis on commerce seems particularly sharp here. Why? Because commerce counters violence. As usual, the four men are amazed by Don Quixote, who explains his profession and reveals himself as the Knight of the Lions. The students invite him to a great wedding one of the greatest and richest weddings which until now has ever been celebrated in La Mancha. Don Quixote asks if some prince is getting married. No, rather the wedding involves a peasant and a peasant girl. He the richest in the entire land and she the most beautiful a man has ever seen. These are Camacho and Quiteria, known par excellence as the rich one and the beautiful one. Notice the essential elements of male and female desire. Camacho represents what women want. Quiteria represents what men want. But there's more going on here than meets the eye. At its core, this is one of Cervantes' typical love stories based on the contrast between the two basic forms of social status in 16th century Spain, wealth and lineage. Did you know? Instruction manuals on the art of fencing were very popular in the 16th century. Thus, there are hints that Camacho is of converso or morisco origin, and that he seeks the old Christian status of Quiteria's family, who for their part, seek wealth. Certain gossipers who can recall all the world's lineages claim that the beautiful Quiteria supersedes Camacho's. But nobody cares about that nowadays, for riches are powerful enough to close many rifts. This idea of hiding racial origins is reinforced by the fact that the wedding will be celebrated in a field that Camacho has covered entirely by a bower in order to provide shade. Also, as usual in Don Quixote, there's a rival man, Basilio. We are not surprised to learn that Basilio and Quiteria were young lovers in the manner of Pyramus and Thisbe, complete with the proverbial wall between their respective houses and the proverbial father of the girl who intervenes in favor of the young man's rival. This should recall Lorenzo's sonnet, but also everyone from Cardenio and Lucinda to Sancho and Tomé Cecial. If Basilio does not have the wealth of Camacho, he does have youth on his side. There is something phallic about the student's lengthy description of Basilio's physical prowess, which ends with a remark about his swordsmanship. He handles his sword as well as any. Acknowledging the sexual innuendo, Don Quixote takes Basilio's side and claims that the boy deserves not only to marry the beautiful Quiteria, but Queen Guinevere herself if she were alive today, in spite of Lancelot and all those who might wish to obstruct it. Note that Don Quixote endorses adultery here, and recall that Don Quixote frequently identifies with Lancelot. In chapters 19 and 20 of part two of Don Quixote de la Mancha, which love triangle takes center stage? A, Cardenio, Lucinda, and Fernando? B, Don Quixote, Dulcinea, and Sancho? C, Basilio, Quiteria, and Camacho? 
Correct answer C. Basilio, Quiteria, and Camacho. Sancho's response is also sexual. Try that on my wife. Although he means that he wishes Don Quixote could make Teresa understand his liberal view of marriage. Here and later, there is confusion regarding Don Quixote's and Sancho's respective opinions. Don Quixote suddenly changes his mind and responds to Sancho with a conservative stand, arguing that parents should maintain a degree of choice and authority when it comes to marriage. His long, detailed argument sounds rational, but we see that even Don Quixote's lucid moments indicate his instability. This is not what he maintained regarding Marcela, for example. Don Quixote seems carried away by his discursive wit, not the actual rationale of his view. In another of Cervantes' reflexive maneuvers, the Gordian knot that appears in the debate over marriage now applies to the narrative itself. Don Quixote asks the licentiate to continue the story of Basilio, but our actual narrator appears not to know the status of the student, referring to him as the student bachelor, or licentiate, as Don Quixote called him. The student goes on to tell of Basilio's reaction to the news of Quiteria's plan to marry Camacho. Basilio becomes the classic romantic hero, a kind of Heathcliff 200 years before Emily Bronte's novel Wuthering Heights. He goes about pensive and sad, talking to himself. He eats little and sleeps little, and he seems nothing less than a robed statue with his clothes fluttering in the wind. That's all for now. Please watch our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.